right. Thanks so much again, David. Um, so next up, we have uh, Eric Pinos. He's the uh, president and CEO of the Blockchain Education Network. And in line with our theme of the next 10 years, he's going to be discussing a sort of, you know, how exactly we're teaching the next generation. Um, so uh, let's give it up for Eric as well. We're pulling up his slides, but let's give it up for Eric. Pretty, uh, pretty hectic morning. Yeah, I just came in from New Jersey yesterday, like in the middle of the, the middle of the day, like getting the, I missed my first bus, so I had to get like the very next one out of New York to make sure to be here on time. But uh, yeah, yeah, people have come from a lot of different areas. Uh, I'll be talking a bit about what we do at the Blockchain Education Network and how we've, we've had a long history with the MIT Bitcoin Expo over the past couple of years. So um, Blockchain Education Network shortened out to Ben started back in 2014 between multiple different Bitcoin clubs. And then it was Bitcoin clubs, that was the main thing. Perfect, teaching the next generation. And I'm gonna talk a bit about that. So Generation Blockchain is a generation of blockchain literate K through 12 and university students. They're not afraid of blockchain and cryptocurrencies. There's many diverse interests between economics, law, philosophy, math, computer science, programming, and they're ready and they're excited to build. I think part of the blockchain revolution that cannot be ignored is the one that's happening on campuses. The students are the ones, they're at a time in their life when they're experimenting and blockchain is such an experimenting technology. Right? The saying is like born too late to explore the world, born too early to explore the galaxy, perfect time to browse memes on the internet. It's also the perfect time to build on blockchain. So we see a, a report that was put out by Coinbase recently that the cryptocurrency and blockchain courses at top universities, uh, this has really changed over the past couple of years. I think the sentiment of the whole environment, us having been around since 2014, one of the earliest things that we had to do was we, a lot of, there, there wasn't enough reception from schools and administrations to get blockchain into classes. So we had to go through the extracurriculars, through the blockchain clubs. The blockchain clubs where students would get together, meet informally on Tuesdays or meet informally whenever, and teach each other peer to peer about blockchain. That's where we had to come in. We give them resources. We give resources, educational material, opportunities, community, and online community for them to be involved in. Because the administrations weren't doing it for their classrooms. In fact, a lot a lot of our earliest blockchain clubs were shut down by the schools because the schools didn't want their students to be associated with Bitcoin, which was synonymous with drugs for some reason at the time. So now the climate's entirely different. You can see that there's more curse courses. These courses are counting for elective credit. So in some cases, they can even be considered a minor or a part of a student's major. So with this shift, we're gonna see a lot more developers entering the space, a lot more people being trained and being trained and have like a standard of quality of like what, what it means to be a blockchain engineer. You see like companies like Visa are saying, hey, we require 11 years of solidity experience even though Ethereum has only been out for like a couple of years. So I think there's like that lack of understanding that when someone is asking for someone who's an expert in blockchain or wants someone that knows about blockchain, what do they really mean when they're asking that? Are they asking for someone who's, who knows cryptography or asking for someone who knows something new like crypto economics or something in like between? And the demand from students is also really high. We have 9% of students that have taken a cryptocurrency course, and I think the really interesting piece, the only double percent of that currently own cryptocurrency, which I'm sure that's like higher than the, than the average person, or the average number of people out of a population that own cryptocurrency. Students are more willing to experiment with these kinds of technologies. 26% want to take a cryptocurrency course. So that shows that there's demand and there's an unmet demand right now because there are 26% of students that want to take a blockchain course but don't have one available at their universities yet. So this is where, where we come in and where we we can all come in and help and educate. So a bit about who we are. Yeah, we started in 2014. We have about 2,300 students, graduates across the world from different universities, over 40 different blockchain clubs between the MIT Bitcoin Club, Blockchain at Berkeley, University of Miami Blockchain Club, um, Columbia Blockchain Lab, University of Florida Bitcoin Club. And now there's so many new ones that have just joined on. U Chicago just formed a club. John Hopkins just formed a club. Dartmouth, Duke. In Boston alone, last year, over 10 clubs were formed. Boston University, Boston College, Harvard undergrad, Harvard Law School, Harvard Kennedy School. Harvard likes having a lot of clubs for some reason. Uh, we have Babson, Bentley, Northeastern, Tufts, Emerson, Suffolk, like all these new clubs all starting very close to each other. 
And we also have several national branches too. So we've done initiatives in Australia, in Canada, in Colombia, in Hong Kong, in Vietnam, doing blockchain club meetups. Um, it's a different culture in other areas where in the US, extracurricular clubs are the way to go, but in some countries like Vietnam, there are no blockchain, there's no clubs. Like they don't, students, when they, when they finish school, they go home and they study. So we've had to adapt, and so instead of like doing blockchain clubs over there, it's like, well, let's work with uh, local meetup groups and you have to give students something to do after school. So the problem, and we see this a lot, is that everyone is reaching out to the same universities. It's, you do a Google search of like blockchain clubs and like who should we reach out to to, to engage with. Um, there's presentations aren't that engaging, and there's a knowledge gap of the new blockchain clubs that have started, and they need to find things for their students to do. I was the MIT Bitcoin Club president last year, and one of like my biggest stresses was that I had to constantly find things for our club to do. I had to like figure out, all right, I'm gonna teach blockchain this week, so I have to make these blockchain slides. I'm gonna teach consensus next week, so I have to make the consensus slides. Or I have to like bring a speaker, I have to do something. And there's also the redundancy, so I realized that Every club in our area is gonna be doing the same thing. In, in Boston alone, there's 14 blockchain clubs, all of them brand new. All the blockchain club presidents were gonna to have to make their own blockchain 101 slides, make their own consensus slides, figure out how to do a Bitcoin airdrop, make the same mistakes. And, and it seemed to me like, well, it just seems so obvious that we should be talking to each other. We should be sharing slides with each other. We should be telling each other, hey, we just did a Bitcoin airdrop this way. This is how you can do it. And then they do it and they put their own spin on it. And that's what Blockchain Education Network has been providing. And so that's how I found it really valuable. Yeah, filling a lot of knowledge gap. We've compiled and collected lessons created by our different blockchain clubs. So if MIT Bitcoin Club produces a, a good material, like a good video or presenter slides, like we add that to the curriculum that we have. Blockchain at Berkeley producing material, we add that to the curriculum. University of Chicago brings in a guest speaker and they have the video of that. We add that to our curriculum. So any of these clubs on their own are like doing great and, and put the videos up there. You know, you put up a video on YouTube of a lecturer, it gets like a couple hundred views and that's good. But I think through, through our network, we can extend the lifespan of the video and extend the lifespan of the material and put it in the hands of other blockchain club leaders that would find it valuable. So we have different, yeah, different activities that we've learned how to do from like Bitcoin airdrops to how to start a blockchain club to like how to teach different things to even how to travel to conferences. So I think we, one of the things that we do is we've, we've been partnering with conferences over the past couple of years to give free students to tickets or free tickets to students. We the North American Bitcoin Conference, we're now in our fifth year of partnership. We co-ran the first MIT Bitcoin Expo. First MIT Bitcoin Expo was co-ran between Blockchain Education Network, MIT Bitcoin Club, and Wellesley Bitcoin Club. So getting involved like very early on, helping students come out to conferences. And that's not just the free tickets that we provide for students, but also through how do you travel? How do you get cheap travel deals? How do you find a buddy to stay with at an Airbnb? It's very scary for a student to travel, and I think that's something that they need a lot of help on. Um, we expand reach by working with club leaders. Now, because of the change in climate, we're able to work with professors and with, with uh, faculty and staff directly. So we're starting to work with more university CS departments. We're working with more professors. We're even working with high school teachers. And that's like a personal goal of mine is to get into more high schools, which is extremely difficult to do because they because they, uh, you need to follow common core requirements. So it's a lot harder to get, uh, it's a lot harder to get material into there. And then increasing engagement, we get students out to conferences. So I think this is important, like at the end, what does it all look like? We have conferences. Last year at the MIT Bitcoin Expo, we brought five students from India over. We figured out how to get their visas. We got them their visas. I had to like sign letters from like the embassy. We are a 501c3 US registered nonprofit. So we had the ability to, to get their visas within like a couple of weeks of the expo. Flew them over, paid for, paid a percentage of their flight, paid a percentage of their stay. It was their first time in the US. It was fr and right, right coming to the US, they came right to the the best place in the world at the best time in the world, the MIT Bitcoin Expo 2018. And that, that really changed their lives. They went back and they started blockchain clubs in their universities in India, and now they're taking blockchain curriculum right to the schools. We've done mastermind dinners in Boston where we bring the blockchain club leaders together where they can talk and discuss with each other. We've done meetups in, in Toronto, in Boston, in Chicago, in Waterloo, and these have been done over the past couple of years. 
who's done Bitcoin airdrops. Georgia Tech did a Bitcoin airdrop based off of the original MIT Bitcoin airdrop back in 2014. And that was repeated across everywhere else. So the University of Florida and in New York City, MIT, Ottawa, we also have blockchain clubs in Puerto Rico. This was the, in McGill University. They all did Bitcoin airdrops, learning from each other how they did the airdrop so that they can like integrate it, put their own spin on it, and then contribute that material back for other students to learn from. And this expands worldwide. So we've had chapters in Italy, presentations done to students in Italy, uh, students in India, students in Vietnam, students in Colombia. And, and every like new country that joins the network is uh, just a new, new resource of students, but also they translate all of our existing content into other languages. So we can reach cultural and language barriers with our material. So that's everything that I have. Um, it's an interesting revolution that's happening. More professors and faculty are getting involved with teaching the next generation. There is the demand, and for people to get involved is as simple as contributing curriculum or helping out with students or teaching a class or getting involved in one of the online communities, many of the communities that exist. Thank you, everyone. So we are running a little bit behind. Uh, if we, we have time for one question, so we can try and keep moving on. Does anybody have any questions for Eric? Is it yeah. Done anything in South Carolina yet? South Carolina. Um, no, we have Duke at North Carolina. You will. I will. All right. Perfect. Look at that. It worked out. Awesome. Thank you. So Eric's going to be here, I assume, the whole weekend. I'll be here the whole weekend. So I... You can find him and chat. And... They're doing some really cool stuff at, at Blockchain Engage Network. All right. Thank them one more. Let's thank Eric one more time. Thank you.